As we've all heard by now, Williams will be looking to move on from Nicholas Latifi after the end of the season. This means a vacant seat at Williams is up for grabs next season. And while most casual fans would say that a seat at Williams isn't something to be excited about, the undeniable fact is that it is still a seat in F1, the pinnacle of motor racing. And with how Alex Albon has been performing and how Nick DeVries was able to slot himself in as a reserve and finish in the points, earning a seat at Williams may not be that bad at all. So, who is the clear favorite for the seat at Williams? Is Nick DeVries any closer now to signing on the dotted line? And what are the chances of Nick driving yet again for Williams this weekend in Singapore? Well, let's talk about it then. But before we do, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on our latest uploads. Now that's out of the way, let's get started. As we all can remember, Nick DeVries had to fill in for Alex Albon at Monza two weeks ago as the 26-year-old driver had to be treated for appendicitis. While doing so, Nick was able to showcase his capabilities and show why he deserves a seat in F1. So much so that Mercedes team boss Toto Wolff would say, I don't think that anyone else could have possibly done a better job in what he did. Nicky would have taken his hat off as a driver. I like him a lot. He is a fine young man. He's not only fast as he has shown in the junior categories, but he's also intelligent and a good team player. I think if one of the teams who still have a free seat don't pick him up by now, then I don't understand the world anymore. And the week that followed, Williams would announce that the team will be parting ways with Nicholas Latifi after three years of driving with the team. In a statement on Williams' website, Latifi said, I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone at Williams Racing, all the people back at the factory and those I work with trackside for the last three years. My initial F1 debut was postponed due to the pandemic, but we eventually got going in Austria and although we have not achieved the results together we hoped we would, it's still been a fantastic journey. Getting those first points in Hungary last year was a moment I'll never forget, and I will move on to the next chapter of my career with special memories of my time with this dedicated team. I know none of us will stop putting in every effort until the end of the season. While team boss Joost Capito would say, On behalf of the whole team, I would like to say an enormous thank you to Nicholas for his three years of hard work with Williams. He's a great team player who has a great attitude towards his colleagues and work and is well-liked and respected throughout the business. Our time together is now coming to an end, but I know he will put full effort in to maximize what we can do together for the remainder of this season. We wish him all the very best of luck for his future, both in and out of the cockpit. And while all of that happened, it has been reported that Albon is still in the midst of his recovery, as the Thai British driver would end up in intensive care after suffering post-operative anesthetic complications that led to respiratory failure. But fortunately, reports say that Alex is making swift progress and has since returned to his home in Monaco after a week of staying in the hospital. It has also been reported that Albon did not suffer any further complications which works to his chances to race again in Singapore. The Thai British driver would also post a video on his social media saying that it will be tough to get back to race form since Singapore is a very physically demanding track. It's one of the toughest races that we go to, so not an easy one, but let's aim high and see what happens, he said at the time. Now where does Nick slot into all of this? Well. As you can guess, Nick will undoubtedly cover for Alex should he and Williams think this is still unsafe for him to be racing. And while this may seem like another great chance for Nick to impress a few more teams on the grid, many F1 fans and pundits were shocked to see how unfit Nick is as the Dutch driver could be heard on the team radio in Monza complaining about his aching shoulders. On average, F1 drivers face G-forces of up to 5 Gs when braking, 2 Gs under acceleration and up to 6 Gs when cornering, which has led former F1 driver now pundit Damon Hill to say, if he thought Monza was tough, he's in for the biggest challenge of his career. And moving beyond this weekend, 
it is safe to say that Nick's services are sought after, with reports of talks with Red Bull surfacing. But Nick would say that he doesn't think that he is in a position to choose, and that impressive isn't enough for such a luxury. I don't quite know if I am in such a luxury situation that I can choose. Largely, that is beyond my control. I've been in talks with Williams for a long time, and I was able to make my debut there last weekend. That would be a logical step. Alpine I have been in direct contact with since July, and I will test for them in Budapest next week. I will fly there on Monday, and as the media had noticed yesterday, I went to Austria to meet Helmut Marko. Those are the facts. So it isn't too much of a stretch to say that Nick is a serious candidate for a 2023 race seat. Though he will be a fully-fledged rookie without a long list of F1 races under his belt. He will have combined experiences from his wider career with some very choice and well-executed F1 outings, and it is clear that those who have observed De Vries up close do not question his F1 credentials in the slightest, with Williams' head of vehicle performance Dave Robson saying that Nick is worth the gamble. Some of it might just be Nick's character, but I think the experience does help for sure. The fact that he's confident, he knows how to race, and what to expect can only make learning the simple stuff more straightforward and getting that extra bandwidth he needs. It does make a big difference to jump in at this short notice at Monza and not be in any way phased by it. It's a sign of his confidence, his experience, and just his general maturity. Judging someone takes a lot more than a one-hour session. I think your history what you're currently doing, what you've been doing, your feedback, how you've worked with the team, no mistakes, consistency, there is a lot to take into consideration. But still, in an hour session, for me, you get an opportunity to show something. When it's there, you take it. Nick would also receive support from a few F1 drivers such as Max Verstappen, who would say, for Nick to jump in and deliver this performance is definitely not easy at all," said Verstappen. I think he did a great job from the things I saw. Also, in terms of defending, he just kept his cool, didn't make mistakes, and I'm very happy for him to score the points. It's impressive, of course, in your first race. And Mercedes driver George Russell, who would also say, There's no doubt he'd deserve a place in Formula One. That's just how the sport is. Not everybody gets an opportunity, but certainly now he's proved everything he has to. And there you have it, guys. So, what are the chances we see Nick replacing Alex at Singapore this weekend? Do you think it's a crime that Nick isn't in F1? Let us know in the comments section below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't.